Welcome to our latest tutorial video for Thinking Particles. In this video, we will discuss how to create wet maps. This tutorial is not specific to any version of Thinking Particles. In fact, we are talking about a little hidden gem in Thinking Particles that allows you to create wet maps. Before we do so, let's have a look at the scene. We have a very simple scene, a box, a dummy object that is used as a particle emitter and a camera and lights. So nothing really spectacular going on here in this scene. However, it is perfect for the purpose of this tutorial. When we are talking about wet maps, we're talking about creating a texture, an animated texture map. So what you would need is a multi sub object material in this case, where we only want to have the wet map appear inside of the box and not at the same time outside of the box or anywhere else. So this object was created with two material IDs. Material ID one is inside of the object. And the important thing here is you have to have clean unwrapping. So no overlapping UV. So every phase should be unique on the UV space. This can be achieved with standard functionality in 3D Studio Max. In 3D Studio Max, we use the Unwrap UVW modifier that lets you flatten the UV of any object. And this is what I've done here. In the case of a box, it's pretty simple, fast and straightforward. More complex objects might need some tweaking. Unwrapping is key to a perfect wet map. Keep that in mind. Now let's have a look how the scene plays out. In this scene we have a particle emitter, a flow, and this fluid is hitting the wall, running down the wall and pooling on the floor. So pretty simple straightforward scene, but that should be fine to show the effect of our wet map. The web map will be later applied to a material. And in this scene setup, as explained before, we use material ID one for our web map. So everything that will be happening is in material ID one. Let me close the material editor here and let's see how the scene as a whole is set up. So we have the object to particle operator here that takes in the dummy object and we store it in the emitter particle group. We use this emitter particle to control our flow emitter. So with the particle we can control the alignment and scale and all other aspects. The great thing is we can also do the tracking of the emitter with changing just the dummy, dummy position. Then we have some gravity, we have the simulation, the fluid simulation going on, nothing special here, just flow boundary and a flow solver. And here comes the collision map, which we use as a wet map generator. So the collision map, you might ask, where do I find it? And it's found in the tools section. And there's right now just this collision map tool. And we can use this collision map as a wet map generator. We just specify uh, which fluids we want to track and we want to specify which object it should collide with. And that's actually all you need. The rest is just where to store it. So you give it a file name. So let's give it a file name like collision map and format. Any format would work just for the ease of use. I'm using this um, MOV file. Doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. You can also use uh, JPEGs. It will be in the end just a standard texture map. And then there's also some other parameters we can use. For example, we can uh, use the uh, scan depth, which is very important, and the size of our texture map we want to create. And then there's this special wet map mode. So if you want to create a wet map, turn this on because this would allow you to have a fade in and fade out time. I'm setting the fading time very low, so it will be fast, maybe uh, looking a little bit unrealistic, but it's okay for, for the sake of a test, this would be just fine. And keep in mind, proper UV coordinates are important. 
and because we are creating a texture map, it means when you change your particle animation, you have to redo this step again. Keep that in mind. It's a texture that's baked and that's done. So whenever you change something, you have to redo this step. Keep that in mind. So now we have our map created. Let me have a look and just drag in the uh, wet map. So let's play this back here let's just a little bit. And there you can see all our UV coordinates are clean. They are not overlapping. So whenever particle hits the surface, we get this nice fading out effect that simulates the drying of our wet uh, material. As I said, it's pretty fast right now, but uh, it's just about showing you how this thing works. And a great thing is this even works in the viewport in real time when we play this back. So now you can see wherever the particles hit, it wets the surface and it dries off. Right now it dries off pretty fast, but you get the idea of the wet map. And the great thing is this was fully automatic. You just have to create the wet map, assign it to the material and that's it. And the material or the web map is assigned right now to the diffuse channel. So I'm, I'm very lazy, lazy and for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just doing a simple thing. So we have the color one and color two and we mix with the web map these two colors. I don't even use materials, but you could use anything you want. But um, because I'm lazy, I'm just using the mix. So I'm mixing a darker color in there just to simulate uh, that this area is wet. And that's uh, pretty much all you, you need to do here. And uh, later this can be applied to any other uh, material channel if you want. So, and because I'm using right now just colors, I can even change the color, which I just did. And uh, now we can simulate not only wet, we can simulate paint, for example. So let's say we want to spray this with a red paint color. And then again, you don't want to have uh, to fade it out. So in that case, you would just either use a very high fade out time or no fade at all. And then you can also control the fade in and other aspects of the effect. So as you can see, it's very powerful, easy to use, and it's in thinking particles. It's just waiting there for you to use it and create amazing visual effects with it. I hope this uh, tutorial was fun and showed you some new features you might not have uh, thought about. And as I said, you can use this map in any material channel you like and control even specular reflections, spectral levels and all this. Once more, thank you very much for watching this video and check out our other videos as well.